people just don't really understand what marketing is or what marketing does. Uh, often when you say marketing, the first thing that goes in their mind is is promotions. And I think because we work across so many disciplines, right? Marketing is communications. Marketing is events and trade shows. Marketing is building a brand. Um, that makes it hard for like people to wrap their brain around. So um, I also think along with that, sometimes people think that marketing is easy, right? That's just you kind of just sit around and think up slogans, right? Or you just put ads in a paper. That's no big deal. It, it's not as hard as sales, right? Um, but marketing is hard, right? I mean, you're trying to you're trying to get that customer's attention. You're trying to build a an identity for your company in the market, and and now uh, with the digital world, the virtual world we live in. I mean, it's an even more crowded space out there. So, I I think. You know, people didn't know what we did and and they think it's easy, but I, I think in some cases is actually harder. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Wisenetics podcast. I'm your host, Ricardo Vivian. I am a business development lead and customer success rep here at Wisenetics. Uh, Wisenetics is one of the main players today when it comes to content production in the livestock industry, in the ag industry in general. Uh, well, my background is in design and communication. I've, I've been adventuring myself in multiple industries in the last few years. And right now I'm diving deep into the ag business, meeting a lot of cool people, learning a lot of new things. Uh, this podcast is a project that aims to create a space for the leaders in the industry, people that make things happen, uh, well, a space for them to share their ideas, their thoughts, and their vision, not only about the industry, but also about life, about the world. Okay, and uh, in this week's episode, our guest is Laurie Stevermer. Laurie is a customer success manager at Alltech. And Alltech, if you don't know, but you, if you're listening to us, you probably know uh, Alltech. Alltech is a global company that provides nutrition inputs for livestock producers. Laurie, welcome. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you here. Uh, so, as uh, as we usually do, we like to start our podcast with a, a few questions about our our guest. And uh, Laurie, if you could start, you know, telling us a little bit about yourself. Sure, I'd be happy to. I, I think the short sentence is: I'm a farm girl who never really strayed far from her roots. Growing up on a farm, married a farmer. Uh, but the details behind that is that I did grow up on a swine and dairy farm in southern Minnesota, uh, near Truman, Minnesota. And I went to the University of Minnesota, graduated with a bachelor of science degree. And my first job was with Wayne Feeds in sales. So I uh, was in sales for a number of years. Uh, Hubbard Feeds purchased Wayne. And then Alltech purchased Hubbard, which is how I got to be with Alltech. Uh, the last number of years I've been in marketing and then just recently transitioned to a new role with our U.S. pork business team as this customer success manager. So my husband and I raise pigs. Uh, we have a finishing uh, farm here, 2,000 head finishing barns. Uh, we raise pigs for the Compart family. Uh, I have three growing children that are in the, the working world. Actually, the youngest one is in law school uh, her first year there. And uh, I, I've been really active in the pork industry Uh been on the national, or excuse me, the state board for Minnesota pork producers, and I'm currently serving on the National Pork Producer Council Board of Directors, and um, am the president-elect for that board. So, pretty much all things, all swine, all the time. Yeah, that's right. I know you're a busy woman in the swine market, in the swine business. Last Pork Expo, I was just looking, Laurie, going all around, talking to everyone, always busy, so... Yeah, you are a demanded person. <laughs> cool, Laurie. Thank you. And uh, also, it's it's nice to see, like, uh, as I've been talking to a few people uh, here in the podcast, uh, it's really nice to see how people have this background and this bound with the industry. Like, mo a lot, not everyone, but lots of people, uh, they have this, you know, familiar connection to the industry, to raising animals uh, and doing uh, all of that. And even though if you, if they are in a technical position, if they are more on the marketing and business sides, most people they have this uh, strong connection with the you no know, you know the whole lifestyle 
of a growing a farm and having this in your DNA. I, th yeah. I think it's something that adds a lot, you know, when you when you when you are working in this industry. You know, absolutely. There's a number of our um, sales team, tech team that you know raise livestock themselves, whether it's a few pigs or cattle or whatever. So we we do have a strong connection to the livestock and and the egg industry, and which is obviously why we're in it. And it's a small industry. I mean, uh, we're a close group. Like you said, we we see each other at shows and events, and it's certainly great to to see friends like that and continue to make those connections. Hundred percent. Even for an outsider like me, it's it's really nice to see and uh, you know, hear new stories, meet new people. Yeah. Uh, Laurie, so uh, the next uh, thing that I would like uh, to ask you, so our audience gets in, gets to know you a little bit better, is what are what would you say are the top three experiences or achievements you had so far in your personal or professional life, and how do you think uh, like not how do you think, but what do you, what did you learn from those experiences? Sure, and I I like the word experiences. Um, you know, I as I was thinking through this, I I'm going to list the first one as as being a mom. You know, that experience the, um, or achievement has just been uh, life changing. Obviously, I think of you know the responsibility with with raising kids, and like I said, I'm fortunate that mine are out on their own, but I mean. The, the joys, the frustrations that you have with them are, are immense, um, but it's very rewarding uh, to watch them grow, to be there for coaching them, for advising them, and, and finally get them out on the world on their own. So uh, very challenging, the highest of highs, the lowest of lows sometimes, but still, I think personally, one of my, my greatest uh, experiences that I've had. You know, I think the second one is my sales career. And and I was a shy farm kid. Like I never saw myself going in sales. I knew I wanted to be in agriculture. I liked animals. My brother was going back to the farm. So I just kind of um, fell into sales, uh, if you will. It was like a job. So uh, it was it was great for me, though. I think learning how to build relationships with your customers, um, you know, learning to understand their business and what their needs were. Uh, being comfortable with, with rejection and, and no and understanding that wasn't necessarily you personally that they were saying no to because um, sales is a tough job. But um, I've learned to listen. Uh, um, I, you know, like I said, learned to be able to relate to a number of different people. And so definitely and I also think that it made me a better marketer. I mean, that sales experience, that farm experience made me a better marketer. So definitely a, an experience that I'm appreciative of. I would say in most recent terms, um, an experience that I'm really, really honored to be part of is is on the National Pork Producer Council Board of Directors, and and as I said, President Elect. Um, you know, it's a tremendous opportunity for me. It's a huge responsibility. I'm extremely humbled that my peers have uh, the confidence in me to to have me as their representative for a lot of important decisions. Uh, you know, it's hard. Uh, the decisions aren't always easy. Uh, they're, they're tough issues. Uh, and sometimes you make a, the right decision, even though you know that people aren't necessarily going to be happy or not everybody's going to be happy with that decision. But I've learned to listen and, and try to ask the right questions so that I can understand those issues better. And, um, just once again, as we talked about, you just meet so many great people. We have, there are so many smart and people in this industry that uh, certainly that chance to interact with them and learn from them has, has been a great experience. That's nice. That's nice. It's, it's somehow a little bit of what, like far away, but at the same time, uh, at the same time with a lot of overlap of what we're trying to do with this podcast, because of course, uh, Meeting people in person and creating these bonds and relationships is something so valuable for professional and uh, also personal life. And here, the idea is also this in trying to give the opportunity for uh, people that are maybe are not in a geographically close to those people uh, to get to know more uh, about them. You know, learn learn new things, new visions. So, and that's true, and that's the great 
thing, if we can say anything great or good that came out of COVID, right, is this ability to to use virtual to bring people together, to get to know each other, to allow teams to collaborate, uh, even though we're not in the same room together, um, and to be able to work with talented individuals that are, you know, half a country or half a world away. I mean, that's that's powerful. I think, you know, we're still humans, and at some point or another, we like to get together, we like to be face-to-face, and that's important too, but... Uh, this ability to build relationships virtually. And I think, you know, I had someone tell me you, you kind of build that relationship in person first, and then maybe virtually you can interact better. But, you know, whatever the case, I mean, it's it's just open new avenues to us. Exactly. And uh, it's it's really nice this because uh, I, when I when I got to the Wise and Addicts, it was the mid, in the middle of COVID. So I, I didn't have the, the opportunity to, you know, understand and see the industry and how things were happening before that. Uh, but, and I see this is a, an industry where, you know, face-to-face is really important. You, you cannot, you, it's really hard to do business without it. But at the same point, this industry, I think people are learning that, okay, we're going to have in-person visits. We're going to be with people in fairs, trade shows. We're going to visit our customers. But there's a lot that we can do to them and, you know, even build those relationships when we are far. So that's yeah. definitely a great input. And yeah. what, one thing you were bringing, oh, sorry, do you have comments? I... Well, no, I was just going to say, I mean, that's, you know, we think about technology and, and bringing people together. And we've got technology that we're using in our barns to start to monitor pigs and things like that. But um, and that's important and that helps us do our jobs better. So it's that balance of being able to use that technology, but at the end of the day, finding the right times to be able to just to sit down together too. Yes, exactly. And, you know, uh, I, I've learned, I've, I, I landed, no, it's n- not exactly the word, but I, I end up in the sales, uh, in, in a sales position also. And just like you, I had no idea I could do any sales. My my experience with uh, sales was uh, my parents, they have like a hardware store here in my city. And it's a totally different relationship of like commercial relationship. Like people come to your your store, they need or they don't, you know, they're, if they're there, they need something. It, it's totally different. And I was like, okay, this is not for me. And I was like, I was really, a, it was a true a truth for me that I could not do any sales. I was like, no, this is not for me. And for the past two years, I've learned so much about it. And I'm, I feel so much, no, much more confident today. And like, Hey, it's, it's basically about listening to people that are in front of you, understanding like their needs. It's not about uh, the image that I had sometimes Well, I don't know, you know, no offense, but I don't know, shoes, store, where people are trying to push you some product and uh, and uh, it's totally different. It's much more about listening than than talking. It's much more about understanding the person in your, you know, that is in front of you and their needs instead of trying to just feed what you have on there, like just trying to push something to them. It sounds like you could have a career back in sales again then, huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Cool. You know, yeah, seriously. I mean, it's, um, we all have preconceived notions of what salespeople are like. And we, we've run into those salespeople that aren't listening to us. But I think truly that ability to work with someone that, that understands our business and, and makes, helps us make decisions that are right for our business. I mean, that's just valuable. That, that person almost becomes like a member of your family, right? I mean, you rely on them, you trust them so much, um, that, that you are helping them make those important decisions. Yes, yes. And most of the time, it, 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 like if you have a product, something, it, there is a need for it. Like people don't, don't, people in companies don't just start creating products because they just, well, there, you might find some random things, but in general, they are solutions. They, they should make uh, your clients, your customers' life easier. So you're, you're actually helping. And uh, knowing that, knowing that uh, what you're doing has a meaning and uh, makes people's lives better or, you know, companies uh, facilitate uh, the execution and business of other companies that, that is, uh, you know, something that really helps and motivates, you know, bring, brings a meaning to what we're doing in sales. So this is good. 
And I also did this transition because right now I'm, I'm starting customer success, also doing services, you know, being closer to those customers that I help to bring uh, to the company. And it's really, really nice also, you know, having the opportunity to strength, strengthen. This is a hard word for a Brazilian. Uh, strengthen uh, relationships also before after you have started them. Cool. And uh, so, Laurie, the second part here in the podcast, we usually talk about marketing, about business, you know, tips uh, that uh, the leaders that come here, uh, they have to help other professionals. And to do this transition, the question that I love to ask is like, how would your mother describe what you do today? Because my mother would have a really hard time trying to explain what I do. Yeah, I think my mom would too. And I and I love my mom. Um, I, I know, um, and my dad has passed away and I, I can say the same thing for him too. I mean, I know that they, they know that I work with farmers and feed dealers and then I'm in the that I work for a feed company, right? And so they understand that concept. Uh, Mom knows that I go to trade shows and then travel and do some communication. So I think they have that general concept of of what I do. But to to say, well, this is what Lori does every day as a marketer would be hard. I mean, my one brother's a farmer, my other brother's a doctor, my sister's a lawyer. So those are really easily identifiable uh, occupations. But um, I would just say generally, mom knows I'm I'm working in egg with farmers and feed dealers, communicating to people, selling things, and you know making business happen. Well, it's it's a good sense of what you do then. Uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, and so, uh, Laurie, uh, I have something that I would like to ask you here, and in your answer, you can bring a different perspective if you want to talk more about like a marketing manager position, which w- was what you were, you know working in until very you know very lately no you were working in recently working on recently or you can bring this uh perspective over your new customer success manager uh, position and the question i have is what is the most what do you think it's the most common myth about the job that you're doing now or your you know field of expertise Yeah, and I think it can almost apply to my new position as a customer success manager or even um, my previous role as a marketing manager. And and, and I think we touched on it a little bit. You know, people just don't really understand what marketing is or what marketing does. Uh, Often when you say marketing, the first thing that goes in their mind is is promotions. And I think because we work across so many disciplines, right? Marketing is communications. Marketing is events and trade shows. Marketing is building a brand um, that makes it hard for like people to wrap their brain around. So um, I also think along with that, sometimes people think that marketing is easy, right? Ah, it's just you kind of just sit around and think up slogans, right? Or you just put ads in a paper. That's no big deal. It, it's not as hard as sales, right? Um, but marketing is hard, right? I mean, you're trying to you're trying to get that customer's attention. You're trying to build a an identity for your company in the market. And and now uh, with the digital world, the virtual world we live in, I mean, it's an even more crowded space out there. So I I think, you know, people didn't know what we did and, and they think it's easy, but I, I think in some cases it's actually harder. Yes, exactly. And uh, it's funny because when you think about like marketing, how it's done nowadays, how it used to be done, well, the concepts for me are really similar. They what change it is like where things are happening now. It, there's many more things happening in the digital, uh, and we think, okay, digital tools that's it, that is great, much easier, you know, to reach out to people and everything. But at the same time, that we are increasing the potential in terms of space and digital tools, it feels like we, the competition also is increasing because now. There's even more people and companies and brands uh, trying, you know, fighting for your attention. It feels like even more than uh, before we when things were more offline. So this is tricky. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And even podcasts. I mean, I love podcasts, uh, but but now there's just so many podcasts, right? And 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 if you want to do a podcast, and I'm sure you're facing this too. Like, how do you get people to? to find your podcast, to regularly listen, to subscribe to it. Um, and it's just, yeah, like you, you spot on it. Everything is just multiplied by a factor of, 
whatever, 100. It's not just one area that we do things in. It's 100 different areas that we can be in. Yes, yes. And attention is not only advertising. It's not only brands doing advertising. It's everything. It's all about content you're consuming. If you're reading new things, if you're listening to podcasts, it's just like <laughs> uh, endless fight for every second of uh, people's attention. So yeah, it's not an easy job. And that's why I was uh, talking like for me, uh, I was talking in the beginning of our conversation for me, especially in not, not only in the ag industry, but in multiple industries, it's really important to have this uh, in-person connection also. I started, give, you know, valuing a lot the trade shows and the events also that I was like, hey, why, you know, you can deliver the message through, I don't know, any online or digital tool, but, you know, creating this bound uh, in person makes all the difference. And for me today, it's all about the balance, you know, you want to reach out to people in person, you want to talk to them, you want to create this, those relationships with customers, with prospects. But at the same point, you don't want to let like just for one or two times in a year to see them in a in an event or in a in a visit, you know, to be in touch with them and trying to build this relationship. You need to to manage to have this while you also or while you also are impacting them through content and through other you know other ways of communication. Yeah, because your messaging can come virtually or through podcasts, but that in-person visit, that makes you real, right? That means you're not some chat bot off to the side or some, you know, somebody <laughs> or something like that, right? You, you know, you're real. I see you now. So even if I've been listening to your information and, and, and like it, when I see you in person, I make that connection, right? This is a real person. Yeah. And, and especially today, because I, I go crazy sometimes. I start looking at, I don't know, chat GPT or all these artificial intelligence tools and what they're doing they're gonna like you can create a person uh, i could be <laughs> you know uh made up from uh, in, uh artificial intelligence right now because they find a way it's crazy so yeah it's important well right now i think it's a little bit hard to fake real people maybe in the future <laughs> it will not but right now yes <laughs> definitely yeah um and uh so laurie when it comes to communication and marketing, what do you think are the main challenges companies are facing today in the ag industry? Yeah, I think um, a number of challenges. And I, you know, if I look at our company, I, I, I don't think we're unique in this. I, I think it's a matter of how do we best utilize our resources? Because uh, we just talked about a whole different ways that we can communicate with people, but yet our, our budgets are limited, right? We don't have unlimited dollars. So how do we make the best use of them? And and we can use metrics and things like that that are, are very helpful and we can tie that to sales and all those those tools are helpful. But um, I, I also sometimes feel it's like a, a vicious circle. The more you do, the more metrics you do, the more you're just kind of spinning and looking at metrics. But but at the end of the day, you know, how do we use our resources? Um, you know, I think for us, it's it's finding out how to reach our customers and in uh, our target market. Right. You know, so so different customers that we're targeting consume that information and or get that in a different way. I mean, we've talked about podcasts and and Hubbard and Alltech are definitely going into that area with some podcasts and so forth. So as that moves, you know, you you still want to move with it to make sure you're getting your messaging to that that target market. And I think like all of us, you know, we're just looking for the next big thing, right? Like, what's the next thing that's going to be hot that's going to catch someone's attention that that we can utilize to to get our message across to build our brand in front of that that person so right once again not unique but i but i think something that definitely we think about as we go about our business yes yes yeah you need to catch the wave you know before it's too crowded also you know, and uh, and that's a really important part of uh, marketing in general and which you know marketing professionals are also charged for is about innovation you know finding mm -hmm. the next new thing that will change the business and uh, get get you ahead of the competition so right. 100% agreed um and when it comes to tactics like do you have anything like do you have your marketing toolbox and specific things that you do 
or even strat. I, I think strategy goes a little bit deeper. So it, uh, it's hard to find about strategy in a broad way. But you have like tools and tactics and things that you do that you and and it doesn't need to be only about marketing. But you know things that you do that help you to be more productive and uh, you know achieve what you want to achieve. Yeah, when I look at our our sales and marketing efforts and our, our toolbox, I think it's important first of all to have a number of tools in your box, right? Not just one. Uh, and I and I think of how we communicate with our our customers or how we try to to build sales with our customers and you know the the traditional ways of advertising, the digital, the print. Uh, those are tactics that we still use. I, I talked about podcasts and, and things like that. I mean, those are those are important. I think trade shows, they're changing. I mean, trade shows aren't what they used to be, but they're still a place where people come together. And um, you know, good trade shows that that are doing doing things to make them valuable that people want to come are, are spaces that we're still going to want to be at because it's that, like we just talked about earlier, that in person one-to-one -one meeting that that allows you to really have some good conversations you know i know for us as as hubbard and part of all tech um our technical teams are really key to to reaching our customers and that ability to have um one-on-one -on -one meetings with those key customers to share that information that we're generating through research that helps their business is really important uh, a lot of our salespeople have quarterly meetings with their key customers where they can sit down and you know go through the last quarter's results, maybe production results. Maybe there were some new um, practices they were going to implement or some new fees. So they're going to sit down and review those results. And it all sounds pretty basic and, you know, like, well, that isn't, that isn't anything really new. But, you know, I think in our busy world, as, as farms get bigger and more complex and, and more people involved, it really is critical to have those times where you all get together and, and bring in the veterinarian, bring in the banker, bring in your consultant, whoever that might be, but just sit down and get on the same page and have the same goals as our customers. And and when utilized right, those those have been a really important tool for us to be able to continue to to sell and service our customers in, in the way that we need to. And uh, it's nice you brought this point, uh, Laurie. Uh, so we, we ran a research uh, with a few uh, of the top big nutritionists uh, in the industry and we were trying to understand like what what made us why, what made them uh, you know choose specific products fit additives or nutrition products um, and not others and this is one thing like when it of course there's the differentiation in a product level you know uh, different fit additives the benefits they bring and so on or nutrition and you can extend that to, I don't know, vaccines or anything, any any product that you, you would buy from a supplier. And one of the main things that made the difference that we found out in this research is that the technical service, you know, after not, not only the product, although there is difference, there is also a lot of similarities in what you'll find in the, in the market. Uh, and the technical support makes all the difference. You know, having someone that is, truly listening to you, understanding what are your bottlenecks. And, you know, sometimes they will find, a, 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 I would say that a technical service, a technical support that really brings value. They will look for, for your problem as not only a sales opportunity, but really, you know, to try to help the person that is having this problem. They are your partners. They are buying from you. And sometimes that goes over, uh, you know, it's not... It's not only what you can provide to them in terms of products. Sometimes they will bring uh, valuable tips and uh, suggestions that will be related to other brands or other kind of solutions. And having someone that is able to do this and not only try to push services. So this is this is what I truly call sales, you know. Uh, and uh, having this is something of great value to to those professionals. And we know this because we did the research. It's not uh, like the the sources are. The sources are not the voices in my head. <laughs> we have, we have, uh, you know, we have some results that show that, and it's just really important. And it's nice to see that, even though it's, it can sound a little bit basic, like okay, sitting down with your customer, but really doing this, it makes all the difference. I'm pretty sure about it. 
You know, it does. And I've been fortunate that in my career, whether it was at Wayne Feeds or Hubbard here, that we've had um, technical support. And what I, I would even go a step further and say it's field technical support. So our our technical people are are located out in the country close to our salespeople and our customers. So they're there to go on farm. And and once again, the ability to problem solve, uh, to help them make decisions is key. The other thing that we're finding is, you know, <laughs> and this is probably one more on the sales side of things, you know, we, we always want to just like save people money and like, okay, you can do this. And well, this much better performance. But as we talk through our nutrition programs, that value of making their life easier to say, Hey, why not try this feed that we have? Because it's only one stage and it's going to make your life easier for budgeting and feed purposes. That's huge with, with the complexity of farms, with the challenges with labor, if you can bring something to somebody that makes their life a little bit easier, they value that. For sure. For sure. Especially with this specific point you brought, labor. If you can simplify things, make life easier, that's that's 100%. Uh, and Laurie, do you think that producing technical content, so we are talking about, you know, different ways we are reaching out to people in person, digitally. Uh, so nowadays, and this is a recurring subject here in the podcast and one of the reasons is because we do that that's what we are expert in which is content right creating content technical content um how, how do you see the importance of you know for a brand today in a, such a technical environment like the ag industry how do you see the importance of providing content to your customers to you know to producers to nutritionists vets how, how, do, how do you measure the importance of, of this? Well, for, for Hubbard and Alltech, it's extremely important to us. I mean, we have invested a, a lot of money into swine research. I mean, we have partnerships uh, with swine research uh, individuals and facilities that I'm, I'm pretty sure there's no other feed company in the industry that has. So our ability to do swine research at a high volume like at any one time we could have, let's say, 11,000 nursery pigs on on trial. And the ability to have a sophistication and, and clarity of results is really key. So we like to say it's kind of core to who we are, that that research and innovation. So the, the ability to take that information then that we generate and uh, messaging it to our customers is really the, the next step, right? Because you can generate all that technical research and content which is important. It's part of our value proposition. It's what differentiates us. But then we have to figure out, you know, what is it that the nutritionists from the large farmers want to see and how do we present it to them versus maybe, you know, a mid-sized producer that relies on us for a lot of technical information versus maybe a blog that we're sending out to a wide audience. So the, the content is key. Uh, what also is key is how do we differentiate and message that to our particular audiences. Yes, you you have the and and this is nice. Uh, we we are working with a, a few companies, a good number of companies today, and uh, well, each one has their own fields of expertise. And uh, but most of them, they also look for you know, they they need to be data based, research based. They they don't just you know create nutritional products or vaccines out of nothing. But one of their challenges is, okay, you have all of that and how do you package that in a way that people can consume it in a fast way? They, they cannot spend like hours and hours reading for uh, reading articles. Well, you, you have your team talking to these customers and, you know, in their daily basis, it's if you, if you get, for, for example, a veterinarian in their daily routine, it's kind of hard to them like, hey, I'm going to find the time to go after all the <laughs> all the research that is going on, trying to find out what is relevant, what is not. That was one, and that that's a sales pitch now. <laughs> that was one, uh, one of the reasons why we decided to create uh, the series of podcasts that we have, the Black Belt series, because it's a way like we, we bring to those professionals every week a new research digested in nine minutes. Of course, not every research is relevant to everyone, but if you can at least get a sense of what's going on and then once in, once in a while find something that is relevant to you, that nine minutes of a podcast might be the, you know, you might get the, the insight 
that will change, you know, your results in production for, you know, the years to come. So that's something that we, we are thinking also about, not only about the content, which is like the prim primary thing, but like how we deliver this, how, how can we make this accessible to people? And in our case, in a way that is, we try not to be boring, like, hey, let's make people learn new things, but also like, we don't want to, we don't want them to sleep while they're listening to us. You know, and that's our job, whether we're, we're marketing people or, you know, customer success managers, right? We need to have the right information so that when our nutritionist sits side by side with another nutritionist and are pouring through a white paper, anal you know, talking about the results, that, that, that they can do that. They can have that information and answer those questions. But on the other hand, if one of our swine specialists might be stopping out on a farm with somebody who has a, you know, good, good to maybe basic level of knowledge of nutrition, you know, white paper isn't going to help them. So you've got to be able to messaging that accordingly that, that shows proof and data, but then in a, in a format that, that fits their style. So uh, that's key. I, I'm always challenging our technical teams, uh, you know, to, to say, well, how do we make this? That's great. You've got your research. You've got your, your paper that's going to go in the journal or be presented at the science meetings. But then how do we take this? to to the rest of our customers out there and just pick out that nugget of information that's really going to resonate with them. Yes. Bring the value, not only the complexity of the, the research, but like how that will impact our lives, how will how will that change the way they do things. Yes. What's nice. in it for me, right? At the end of the day, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? Perfect. Uh so Lori, we were coming to the end of our conversation here. Uh so you have this great experience in farming, you know, animal raising and uh, in sales, marketing, all of that, working in one of the biggest nutrition companies in the world. Uh, so uh, what is the one piece of advice you would give to someone that is starting their career on your field right now, like in marketing, in the ag business or in uh, service and customer success? Well, it's a piece of advice that I've told a couple of our new employees that have started. I, You know, it's don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, just make sure that you learn from them and, and try not to make the same mistake twice. I think we put really high expectations on ourselves. And, you know, as young individuals, or I can speak my, for myself, as young and, and new in the industry, I didn't want to make mistakes. You want to be perfect. Um, I think especially today, individuals come in with a high level of training and expertise, and, and they want to be perfect. And, and sometimes that presents prevents us from maybe taking some risks or trying some things that we should. So, um, yeah. I, and I think even no matter how old you are, it's okay to make mistakes. Like I said, we just need to learn from them. Because if we don't make mistakes, we're probably not trying hard enough or, ba or yeah. not thinking big enough, right? Yeah, maybe you're playing too much in the in your comfort zone if you're not making mistakes. This is something that I've been learning. I was... I, I for a long time, I had a fear of failure, and and that, like, I, I can see this even uh, like if I look to me uh, to myself when I was like a kid, uh, if I was doing a new sport or anything, I was like, if I was not good at it, I would just like stop doing. Like, hey, you know, I'm not good at it, so I'm not trying. And I think it's not like a traumatic thing, or, <laughs> or you know, but. I think I could have tried different things, learned more if I were, was more open to, you know, failing and it's okay, you know, learning with the, the failure and uh, working here at, uh, you know, working in a startup has taught me a lot about this, the spirit in the company. Of course, we try to do things with, uh, you know, excellence and the best way we can, but at the same point, we have, uh, how can I say this, action bias, like, you know, we're going to make it happen. Maybe it's not going to be perfect, but we're going to, after we did it, we're going to see it's not perfect. We're going to try to learn with that and then we can improve. But we're, we're not going to miss opportunities or just, you know, trying to get uh, wait for the perfect time to make things happen because the perfect time never comes. So this, this, is, this is something that I've learned recently, actually, in the last two years, I can say. And it's been a game changer for me. So it's a good tip. I like this. Well. Thank you. And I, you know, I think you bring up some good points too, and that we're not, we're not talking about lowering our standards or getting sloppy on our work, but 
Um, I think it's okay to have high expectations. I, I try to carve a portion of my marketing budget to do something new, right? So that I can try something new. And if it works great, if it doesn't, you know, it, it didn't blow my whole budget. I, I still have other monies to do stuff. But if, if you don't try, you won't know either. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, Laurie, you have great exper expertise uh, as we, we've been talking. And, and you probably have some good resources. If there are books or there are videos, there are uh, podcasts. Do you have any resources that you would like to share with, you know, your peers and even people in the industry when it comes to content uh, to help them learn more about marketing, about business, or even about the ag and livestock? Sure. Well, I, I'm into like organizational health and structure and, you know, like team development and everything like that. I, that's kind of one of my uh, hot buttons or passions. And so I've, I've been a big fan of Patrick Lencioni. He's wrote like five dysfunctions of a team and the ideal team player. And, and the latest uh, book and podcast that he has that I like to listen to is uh, called the uh, six types of working geniuses. So it, it's really interesting when you start looking at what people's strengths are and what they like to do and, and making sure that, you know, that you spend the majority of your working day doing the things you like to do and that you're good at. And, and to be able to put together a team that has all the different geniuses that you need to be successful. So Patrick Lencioni, uh, the six types of working geniuses, it's a podcast, it's a book. Um, I would recommend it. Okay. Gotta, I gotta check that. Well, you, as, as they say, don't judge a fish by its, you know, capacity of climbing a tree. This well, is something we've been learning also here in the company. Like we, we always try to bring the best people we can. And, but most of times it's, you know, having them in the right place. You can have someone that is incredible and can do a great job. If they're not, you know, where they should be, it might just be a terrible experience for everyone. So this is, this is really, really nice. Wrapping up our conversation here, uh, Laurie, where can our uh, audience find you online? Well, they can find me personally on LinkedIn. I'm there on LinkedIn. Um, I don't do any other podcasts or anything like that, but uh, yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn. So, Cool, cool. So, guys, if you're listening to us, Laurie Stevermer on LinkedIn. And by the way, she is the customer success manager at Alltech to make, make your life easier to find her. Okay. Uh, well, thanks, everyone that has uh, stayed with us, is listening to us. Uh, it was a great uh, conversation we had here with Laurie. And I wait for you in our next episode. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you.